the first seconds after dinosaurs went extinct. Nobody could have predicted the impending disaster. Just as they had done for almost 170 million years, dinosaurs stalked one another and ate luxurious greens. Hey there, welcome back to Earth Insider, your ultimate source for everything science and world related. Stay informed and entertained by subscribing to our channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the first seconds after dinosaurs went extinct. However, what precisely transpired on the day of the asteroid strike? Experts are poring over the rock record to piece together a terrifying account of one of the deadliest days on our planet's history. But before we proceed with details about dinosaur extinction, if you're new to this channel, remember to hit the bell icon and subscribe so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. The first seconds after dinosaurs went extinct. Then, in an instant, the world was altered. Almost six miles wide, a piece of extraterrestrial rock crashed into what would later become the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. The jolt was like a gunshot on the planet. The planet would never be the same. A portion of the harm is simple to evaluate. The impact left a large crater with a circumference of nearly 110 miles, half covered by the Gulf of Mexico. However, the devil is in the details regarding geology in some parts of the planet, like indications of a giant tsunami circling the Gulf Coast. With such energy and water displacement from the impact, an enormous wave tore to the coast within 10 hours. A geologic jumble remained. Sea sand on what should have been dry land and fossilized land plants in places where the ocean should have mixed with sediment from long ago. In the world where the tsunami occurred, these strata violently demarcate the end of the Cretaceous and the beginning of the Paleocene. Not that the impacts only happened in the affected area. Enough of the bomb-induced landslides and other geological disturbances to be felt as far away as Argentina, which produced its tsunamis. But the heat was more hazardous to life in the Western Hemisphere than the waves. When the asteroid crashed with Earth, rock fragments and other debris were launched high into the sky. These particles, known as spherules, are distributed all over the planet in a layer that is one-tenth of an inch thick. Geologist Doug Robertson of the University of Colorado states, the kinetic energy carried by these spherules is colossal, about 20 million megatons total, or about the energy of a one megaton hydrogen bomb at six kilometer intervals around the planet. About 40 minutes after impact, the spherules began to plummet through the atmosphere at 40 miles, converting all that energy to heat. The whole Earth was covered in intense infrared radiation from ballistically re-entering ejecta for several hours after the Chicxulub impact, as Robertson and colleagues stated in a paper titled Survival in the First Hours of the Cenozoic. Earth turned into a burning world. Each descending spherule became an incandescent torch, rapidly and drastically heating the surrounding air due to friction it could not have evaded any creature that was neither submerged nor underground, including most dinosaurs and many other terrestrial animals. A few continuous hours of extreme heat may have immediately killed animals left out in the open. In certain areas, the relentless heat wave was enough to ignite parched vegetation and start wildfires. At the very least, a significant portion of Cretaceous life may have vanished in a few hours on land. Only the heat pulse and its aftermath significantly reduced the variety of life. However, the circumstances proved to be considerably worse. These extremely thin spherules, only a hundredth of an inch thick, were discovered in Haiti at the 65 million year old KPG boundary, which marks the boundary between the Cretaceous and Paleogene epochs. As they descended to Earth, all living things would have been submerged in extreme heat, heating the atmosphere. According to Robertson, the climate impact was enormous. The impact and fires would have caused dust and soot, resulting in an impact winter where no sunlight could reach the Earth's surface for approximately a year. Geologists can see this as a thin layer of soot that occurs globally at the KPG boundary, which marks the transitional layer between the Cretaceous and the next epoch. A new peril now confronted organisms that survived the extreme heat and fires, According to Robertson, the phytoplankton base of almost all aquatic food chains would have been eliminated and caused the complete collapse of aquatic ecosystems. 
Likewise, terrestrial plants were deprived of vital sunlight for photosynthesis. Taken as a whole, evolution might have been reversed in less time than it took for a single Tyrannosaurus rex to mature, a process that took over 180 million years to complete. With the end of the Cretaceous, death came rapidly. Robertson claims that this difficulty partly stems from the disproportionate attention that dinosaurs receive. Robertson notes that pollen and plankton paint a more accurate picture of what transpired after the hit. However, the fossil record indicates that over 75% of extant species vanished entirely, suggesting that conditions were likely unfavorable for those who survived. According to Robertson, it's reasonable to suppose that the 25% of surviving species had near-total mortality. Nevertheless, these lucky creatures would establish the course of the following 66 million years of evolutionary history. According to common wisdom, 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs unexpectedly became extinct. Many justifications have been put forth as to why. The impact event hypothesis and the massive volcanism hypothesis are the two most widely accepted theories to explain the demise of dinosaurs. According to the first theory, the dinosaurs were killed when one or more asteroids crashed into the Earth and caused a nuclear winter. The second attributes their extinction to vigorous volcanism or long-lasting, extensive volcanic eruptions. The high concentration of iridium discovered buried in the sediments separating the Paleogene from the Cretaceous period is mentioned in both theories. According to the conventional paradigm, the Paleogene is considered the period of Earth's history during which the dinosaurs went extinct. Both dinosaur extinction theories consider certain pieces of evidence while rejecting others. For example, how do we explain petroglyphs and other ancient artifacts that show humans interacting with well-known dinosaurs like Triceratops, Stegosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, and sauropods if either theory is true and there is a 60-plus million year gap between man and dinosaur? Some assert that they have discovered fossilized dinosaur footprints alongside human and hoof impressions in the same rock strata. How can we make sense of this within the traditional viewpoint? If dinosaurs became extinct long before humans, why do ancient societies from every continent on Earth document their encounters with enormous reptiles? These animals, now collectively called dragons, have been consigned to mythology. However, we have to ask how it came to be that so many remote civilizations worldwide developed a familiar dragon mythology. Could the legends contain a fundamental historical truth? Could the enormous reptiles our ancestors mentioned years ago be related to the extinct dinosaurs, the giant reptiles we discovered buried in the ground? This is the situation. The overwhelming evidence points to a fundamental error in the common wisdom. The entire human race seems to have forgotten about the issue, and we have successfully created a scientific paradigm that keeps us in the dark. Therefore, how do we explain the extinction of dinosaurs? The combination of the climatic extinction of the remaining 20,000 to 2 million species, which scientists estimates may have vanished during the last century alone. Climate change can severely harm ecosystems, and humans tend to eradicate or drive out all of our primary competitors. For this reason, there aren't many lions, tigers, bears, or other predators in our cities, suburbs, or even rural areas. There's a reason we occupy the highest position in the food chain plants were less damaged than animals during the Cretaceous extinction event because their seeds and pollen can withstand adversity for longer. Following the extinction of the dinosaurs, flowering plants took over the planet, carrying on a trend that began in the Cretaceous and is still going strong now. However, every land mammal weighing more than 25 kilograms went extinct. All that's left are the germs of what we know today. The lineages that led to modern creatures survived the impact of the asteroid, but according to Paul, many of the major animal groupings that are alive today perished to some extent. Dinosaurs that were not birds perished, but those that were birds survived. While some bird species died extinct, the lineages that gave rise to modern birds continue to exist. Scientists will keep poring over the information. One of the greatest murder mysteries ever solved, who could resist? However, another thing consistently draws our attention to that awful, awful, terrible day 60 million years ago. By examining the historical record of global death, we are forced to confront our species' mortality and consider what could be required of us to survive over the long run. 
This concludes today's video. We celebrate dinosaurs for their extended domination over the world and use them as symbols of achievement. But we might meet the same end if they could be destroyed so fast and irreversibly. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.